a very, very nice prize there. And keep in mind, uh, if he goes on to win more games, then obviously even bigger potential prizes as well. But spawning in now over towards the east, the southeast of the map. It is Marine Lord. He is on the color blue. He's going to be playing the French today. And his opponent, Probe, who spawns in on the west side of the map. As you guys know, the west side is the best side. The Rus are going to be his civilization of choice. And he is going to be playing the color red. So... French versus Rus is a traditional matchup in AoE 4 currently, simply because these are the two Feudal Age Knight civilizations, so we have seen a lot of that in the early days of the latter. But on a map that's this well defendable and sort of slower paced, I actually like French a lot more. Their economy is really going to kick in a lot faster than uh, the economy bonuses of the Rus. Yeah, that is exactly... Yeah, uh, one of the things to note as well, this is a larger map, so there are more wolves that do spawn here, uh, but still we're going to see Rus players having a difficult time trying to reach that all-important uh, 500 bounty bonus. So we'll have to see exactly uh, how Probe does. How do you think this match is going to unfold? What kind of strategies do you think we're going to be seeing out of these players? I think that the Rus player has to play for a very, very long game here, potentially even a fast Imperial-ish style approach. And the reason why is because uh, in Imperial, the Rus is one of the hardest civilizations to beat. They have access to the Streltsy, they have access to Spring Wards with insane range. So there's a lot to love about the Rus in Imperial. The tricky thing is holding out until Imperial and making sure that you don't run out of gold until then because you only start with two droplets of gold. But I think that's what you want to do with the Rus here. Try to play an early Imperial and leverage that advantage, pushing the middle and securing the gold for yourself. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Rus on this map, it's a little bit more difficult just because of the relic placements. You can see that there are relics that are very sort of close to Marine Lord's base. He's got that one that's behind the tree lines, and then he's got one that's uh, sort of a little bit uh, towards the center of the map. But these relics aren't the easiest to secure. There are obviously five relics on the map, as, as there are for all 1v1 maps. Uh, but uh, now going to be aging up, probe getting a pretty early age up here. He's got... How many scouts has he got out? Just the two scouts at the moment, it looks like. So he's got one down to the south, one towards the north. He's going to be bringing in those double wolves. But uh, sitting on 160 at the moment for his bounty. So not doing too badly, I'd say. Not doing too badly, given the fact that there is uh, one more patch of huntables that would give him 70. So he would be at 230. Plus the 50 from these wolves. That's got to be a solid 280. Not great, not terrible. Yeah, not great, not terrible. Nothing like Marine Lord's last game. That was absolutely insanity. Uh, the way he was able to to get up on those numbers, they were just absolutely crazy. Uh, so let's talk about what we're going to be expecting from this game. So I would like to see uh, from Probe, just your standard sort of fast castle is what I would expect to see. No sort of early age two shenanigans. We might see uh, an early knight come out just to try and snag boars. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Um, and with regard to the hunting cabins, we don't actually see him going for a huge amount of scouts. So normally you would say three would be the minimum requirement um, to actually get uh, professional scouts. Actually, we might have three scouts out. Uh, there's one in the base. There's one down to the south. And there is... Yeah, and there's one up towards the north. So there you go. There's the three. So we might see professional scouts coming out for him. And it looks like he actually snags the 25 gold from that wolf. Extremely important because without that, he would have been at 220. And even with the sheep, he might have not reached the level 2 bounty, which is, I think, a must-have. That extra 5% gather rate boost is pretty massive. Yeah, he's actually got one sheep that's in there right now under his town center. If he kills that, he's going to get that extra... There it is! He gets that extra 5 and goes up to the second tier, so very nice for him. Uh, we'll take a look and see what he plans to do with his build order, but it looked like those villagers were heading out towards that gold mine. So looking to actually drop down a, a, a gold uh, mining camp there... Does he have a stable that's going down at this point? Anything like nope. that? That uh, nope. No, nothing really. Um, so no professional scouts coming in just yet. Let's take a look over at Marine Lord's base. I'm curious to see exactly what he's up to, whether he's on stone, whether he's just looking to fast castle himself, uh, whether he's looking to professional scouts potentially. Doesn't look like he's gathered up. He's actually got a huge amount of gold, uh, sitting on 280 gold. So I'm expecting that we're probably going to see... Uh, do we see a, um, a school of cavalry into four or five scouts here potentially? Uh, it's a possibility, because he's got the gold for professional scouts. Speaking of professional scouts, Probe added two more scouts upon hitting Feudal Age, so he probably wants to lame all the hunt here from his opponent. 
Yeah, interesting to note. He is now getting professional scouts. It's coming through a little bit late, so not instantly, but we do have that night coming out. Professional scouts, it looks like it might be actually underway. Are we able to just double check that mill uh, right there? Yep, yep, it is professional scouts. So this is the meta at the moment. Double professional scouts. So looking to deny hunt from your enemy, looking to secure it for yourself. So both players going professional scouts. Both players probably going to be looking to get that survival techniques in as well. Now, I would love to see Probe just hiding his scouts in the stealth forest while he's waiting for his upgrade to come in because that first knight from Marine Lord could easily kill them. But it looks like the knight doesn't know, so knight is just going to gallop forward and that should l allow Probe to yoink all those huntables here. Yeah, he's going to be very happy picking up these four, uh, th these four carcasses. There's no way that he can really be denied these at the moment. Professional scouts now coming in. There's the three carcasses. Those guys are going to be heading out towards the north as a knight looks to make a connection. But unfortunately, these these uh, these scouts are all taken. Oh, this one, on the other hand. This one looks like it might be in a bit of trouble. Five HP left on this one. It was heading towards the town center. It's going to be in a bit of a tough time as it drops the carcass and Probe not paying attention, losing out a free deer there from his enemy and giving it over towards Marine Lord. He's a very happy camper right now. He is a very happy camper. And there is a knight hiding in here as well. But it looks like the other three scouts will get back. Still, three huntable stake here from Marine Lord's side is something that Probe has to be happy about as he's grabbing survival techniques. Has a defensive tower on the gold, and for the Rus, he can garrison eight villagers inside that tower, unlike other civilizations that can only garrison five. Yeah, and that's a big advantage because a lot of people think about, you know, the Rus uh, hunting or the uh, Rus wooden fortress is a bit of a disadvantage because it is more expensive. But for most civilizations, you're going to be wanting to have more than five villages on gold if you're going for this kind of build order. And so playing as the Rus and being able to have more than five villages out here without dropping down a second wooden fortress is really, really great. Because all those other civs would have to drop one or two outposts, which would actually cost more than the wooden fortress would. So a really, really nice move here. Indeed, and the wooden fortress, of course, can boost your lumberjacking as well. So you see, not only this bad boy gives safety to these lumberjacks it also helps with the wood income as well yeah and speaking of uh of wood income now we've got ourselves a little bit of a an in, a return on investment over here from the wood income the wooden fortress gonna be able to secure up the hp of that villager and make sure it does survive chivalry gonna be coming in as well nice little upgrade and he's got to be careful now because these villagers are going to continue to be under siege Probably needs to get a wall up here just to give himself a little bit more time. Even if you just spend 15 wood on, a, a, you know, just a nice little small segment, it's going to prevent these knights from constantly running in and always idling your villagers. You're going to be on the watch for this when it happens. And there you can see once again. So just one villager heading out and just adding in that little extra wall would really help probe in this situation. Let's see if he does the math. I would love to see that, but he also has enough wood to make a stable himself. But he needs something because his villagers are being idled constantly over here by these knights. Yeah, yeah, that's a really, really good point. Um, can we take a look over at Marine Lord's base? I'm curious to see exactly what he's got going on. I mean, both players now looking to secure their age up. Uh, we can see that Marine Lord now having 1,331 food. Probe now hitting that 1,200 mark as well. Himself and Marine Lord going to be clicking up, probably going up with the Guild Hall, I'm expecting. Take a look. It is indeed the Guild Hall. So the pretty much the standard landmark for aging up with the French to the third age here. And for Probe, I'm expecting that we're going to see the Trinity of the Abbey. Let's see if it gets dropped down. Here it goes. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. There it is. Yep. It's Abbey and of it Trinity. Yes. Yeah, so not the, not the Trinity of the Abbey. Abbey of the Trinity. But uh, yes, uh, very close. And it looks like a villager may have gone down on this gold mine. There was six out here. There's only five now. Yeah, there was a villager casualty out there. And you see that those knights are just being so, so frustrating over here for Probe. He has fared in all deer from the left-hand side patch, even added the fourth scout again. But it looks like Marine Lord will just be happy to pick up whatever is left of this deer patch over here. And I feel like Marine Lord is slowly carving out a bit of a lead for himself here. Yeah, it definitely feels that way. I, I think the biggest component of a his sort of early game victory is just this knight harassment. He got out these these two knights, and he's just been able to constantly idle these gold villagers. And even if you don't get many kills here, you're still idling. And as once again idling out these four villagers, you know they're gonna just walk away those knights. They're gonna heal up with their chivalry, and then they're gonna be right back out here again. You know, idling 
more villagers. And it's just a very, very slow, methodical lead that he is carving out here. Exactly, especially if you consider that he also has the faster training villagers with the French, so he will have the better eco by default. Looks like knights are coming in to hit the wood line. Reactions are nice from Probe. He's got to be careful here, though. He's got more than eight villagers out as they do not manage to make it inside. Actually, uh, managing to get uh, a couple of villagers in there, but going to be able to pick up at least two villagers there. Very, very nice pick up there for Marine Lord, and he continues to etch out that lead. Now, one thing to note is that Marine Lord has spotted the archery rangers from Probe as he enters into the Castle Age. So he's going to know that there are some horse archers coming right up for him. So what is the response? What is the appropriate response to this? That is the question that Marine Lord's going to be asking. And do we see some siege workshops that are going to be dropped down as a response to this? I expect that we will, but at the same time, remember, you're going to be very careful against the Rus opening up with siege workshops because if they do go for that fast age four, you can be punished very, very badly. Uh, looks like all villagers will survive here. And now we get some horse archers out. Horse archers don't perform amazing against heavily armored cavalry, but they still have a pretty decent damage output. Yeah, it's it's a really good unit uh, in general. So if we take a look, at how much damage does it actually do just at its base level here? So 12 damage. So really, really decent considering there's only uh, four ranged armor there. Once they get those veterancy upgrades, it'll be five. Then with the plus two, it'll go to six. Uh, but, you know, still getting six damage into those bad boys is very, very nice. And then obviously you've got the, your own plus two that you can get out as well. But going to be able to pick off that first Royal Knight though and really try and punish... Uh, the French player here. He's got to be careful, though. You can see that he is guarding this relic down here towards the south. Looks like Probe is going to be able to pick it up. If he can click on it, looks like he wasn't able to click on it, despite being on top of it quite literally. And now those knights going to be coming in and connecting with the uh, the horse archers at the front. And Probe feeling a little bit bad, I'd say, after that one, Lytical. Yeah, I love the game plan, though, from Probe. The thing is that the horse archers don't cost gold, which means that he doesn't need a huge amount of gold. He can just surrender the middle quite fast. And of course, he can pick up the relics as well for some extra gold income. So he can play a long game that's very defensive without contesting the middle, and he won't run out of gold. Yeah, one one of the things that Marine Lord was doing there, I'm not sure if you, you noticed it. So I, I don't know how many people in chat have actually played League of Legends at a you know a highly competitive level, but one of the things that happens is there's a hero called Thresh, or a champion called Thresh, and it's got a lantern that it throws out to... Um, to basically uh, guarantee the safety of one of its allies. And the ally has to click the lantern. And what happens is people respond to that by dropping what are called wards on top of that lantern. So you can't click the lantern, so you can't be carried to safety. And what we saw Marine Lord doing there was standing on top of that relic so that Probe couldn't click the relic. And so he wasn't able to take it away. It was such a smart move from Marine, Marine Lord. A really, really smart move. Now, here's the problem with the Cav Archers. These bad boys don't shoot, unlike the Mangadai, when they are running. So, you have to turn back and fire, and the Knights can slowly start chasing them down. Really nice moves here so far uh, from these players. I'm absolutely loving the Horse Archer mass that's beginning to build. And the question is, how do you counter this? Because th there's a couple of answers to that question. The, the first one's obviously Springholds, and we talked about that already. The second one is going Archers yourself and just trying to outmass them. But... Do note that if it gets to Imperial Age, these horse archers are very potent as well, Lytical. These, these guys get 6.5 range. They are very, very potent. And in general, the idea with the foot archers against horse archers concept is that you want to outnumber them. But it's very difficult when you started going for knights. I feel like the best bet here for Marine Lord might be just four knights, potentially supported by some spring lords and mangonels. But look at those beautiful splits that we've got coming in from Probe, splitting them up into four different groups there and having a great time as those knights try their best to get connections and not make absolutely anything. All of these knights are having a, a very tough time now as Probe continues to secure up these relics on the map. That's going to be the fifth relic, is it? That gets taken from Probe, or is it the, the fourth one? Does he have a monastery yet, Marine Lord? We'll take a look now towards his base and see if there is a monastery out for him. He does. He looks like he's secured up just that one uh, but I suspect towards the north, he's probably got a, a uh, yeah, is, is that a, a, um, a monk heading out that up there towards the north? Probably not. Uh, it is, it's a double monk. Doesn't uh, matter, because be happy. we already have three for Marine, or for Probe, and he's got a fourth one coming in. So Probe is going to have four here, no matter what. And that's going to compensate for his lower villager count. He's currently at 45. 
and Marine Lord is at 63. Actually, that's a little too much to compensate for. Yeah, he's going to have a difficult time, but he is going to try and take these sacred sites. Now, keep in mind, he's going to be sitting at 400 passive gold a minute uh, from those four relics. Taking the two sacred sites will bring him up to 600 gold, the equivalent of about 15 villagers. So, you know, it's it's not a terrible spot for him to be in, but obviously going up against two town center French, it's always going to be tough. But there is definitely a window here that is beginning to build for probe, and it looks to be closing probably within the next seven to eight minutes, I would say. But uh, I, I'm suspecting if Probe can push in, maybe with a ram, maybe with a springled, um, and look to do a bit of damage, he could potentially seal this game. Does he need to push, though? Because at this point, he could just go for both sacred sites. You see, Marine Lord is walling himself up, so it might be a lot safer for Probe to just take the sacred sites. As you see, Marine Lord is killing the boar just so that his opponent cannot do that for the gold bounty. Yeah, very smart from Marine Lord there. Uh, I do definitely think that the... Um, the burden here is going to be on Probe uh, and not Marine Lord to push out. Uh, I think Marine Lord is definitely going to be fine. Once it gets to, like, he, he's going to have another 10 minutes before he needs to attack. By then, he's going to be Imperial. By then, he's going to have um, his elite uh, knights, which are going to have, I think it's nine ranged armor. He's going to have royal bloodlines. He's going to be absolutely fine. Um, he's obviously going to, you know, have all of those upgrades in, the elite upgrade as well. And he's going to be feeling very good about himself because he'll be able to just sort of smash in as many units as he likes uh, to try and deal with those horse archers. And he'll very effectively be able to push Probe off those sacred sites. But now we see Probe doing his best to actually clean up this raid towards his base. He's got a, a warrior monk in amongst the action here as well. Looks like it's going to be a cleanup, although he might lose the spring bolt here after all. Nope, that's not going to happen. As, yeah, uh, needed to pull villagers, but it doesn't look like he's going to need to right now. Uh, looks like Cav Archers are trying to move in. We have Foot Archers being masked here by Marine Lord, so Probe might not be able to control both of those sacred sites. But one of the things that we haven't talked about is that he's got a very, very good gold income, so he can use the High Trade House to buy food and go for Imperial, try to go for Strelzi. Yeah, and it looks like he might actually be doing that. We see plenty of resources stacked up for him at the moment. He's sitting on 1,700 gold right now, and that is absolutely ludicrous. Especially if you consider the fact that the high trade house, as you see, is buying food with it, is a very effective way to buy food. So he just needs f 1200 gold for Imperial Age, which means that he can buy uh, food with 500 gold. That, if I do the math appropriately, that's 750 food that you can get. That's a, a, a huge amount. Uh, but he, yeah, he's going to be very happy. He's almost about to click up, actually. So going up, he's got a couple of options available to him, but the best by far in my opinion, is going for that uh, all-important high armory. He's going to have the resources now to click up, and indeed it is the high armory that he does go up with. But now going to be trying to force uh, Marine Lord off this sacred site. He did manage to secure it. Marine Lord once again going to be walling in his enemy. So we've started to see players do this more and more. They go for aggressive walls against their enemy, and that's exactly what Marine Lord is doing up here towards the north. Indeed, that can slow down the push of your opponent and potentially secure both sacred sites for Marine Lord. Because that's probably his plan. Left side is closed, so Marine Lord won't be able to counterattack, but he's going to be able to control the sacred sites. And now we see the, the siege. Look at the siege workshops going down on top of that high armory. So he's got the two that are already up here. This high armory going to be reducing the cost down of any of those sprinkles. And this is actually a really difficult spot for Marine Lord. Um, so even though he's up in score at the moment, there is a huge window here uh, that that probe has got so marine lord needs to get through this front gate and he needs to get through quite quickly because if he gets up to imperial and researches the all-important uh elite horse archer he's going to be able to defeat this army very easily keep in mind on those archery rangers there is also an upgrade uh i can't remember what the name of it is but yes there it is mounted precision so plus two range he's going to have 6.5 range on these horse archers and combine that with springles and you've got an almost untouchable army Absolutely. It's a very fast moving, very, very tanky. And uh, Probe doesn't even have the plus two attack on these guys just yet. Marine Lord now coming away from the base of Probe. Going to be looking to pick a fight up here towards the north. 
That's exactly what Probe wants. So Probe does not want to be fighting against his opponent in his base. He wants to build up a safe mass, which is what he's doing back there at home. But now look towards the north, and we actually spot out the Marine Lord has walled in the majority of this, but it looks like there is still a little bit of a gap. He's going to be able to take down the Villager before the walls get oh. through, unless that Villager manages to tap it. He it did tap. He's going to be able to get through one at a time, so managing to just get out of here, and that is a very, very fortunate response right there from Probe to be able to click that Villager, losing a lot of his Horse Archers. Oh my lord, that was close. That was so, so close. In fact, it was so close that it could have been a game-losing situation for Pro because he really needs those Cav Archers to stay alive. And you see, he's got walls up here, so the counterattack won't work out for Marine Lord. And now, given that that army still is alive, as you said, those cheap Spring Lords coming in with the range upgrades, the Roller Shadow Triggers, and uh, the other upgrade that we already have, I think, for Spring Yeah, he's Lords. already got that upgrade. I can't remember the name of it. It's something to do with Precision... Uh, firing or something like that, but uh, yeah, it does a lot of damage, uh, basically increasing the uh, the range on Springles by 1.5. So you can actually get the longest range Springles in the game with the Rus through these upgrades. And now we see they open up, and yeah, Marine Lord probably realizes at this point he might be in trouble. He is in trouble. Upgrades are still missing here for Probe, but he's grabbing mounted precision just now, and he's coming in with the Streltsy, which won't perform that well against the archers, but they will have insane firepower against the knights. Yeah, very curious that he's going for Streltsy. I think in this situation, you can pretty much avoid going Streltsy. Uh, just going horse archers, elite horse archers with that upgrade, the precision, mounted precision upgrade. Uh, that, is, that is all you're going to be needing against this composition, obviously, with the Springlords to back them up as well. Uh, so I'd look to see a couple Spring Lords potentially moving up here towards the north just to deal with this potential threat. And indeed, we do see them migrating up this way as they now look to break through. Now, do we have an Age 4 coming through yet from Marine Lord? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't really look like he's in a position to age up yet either uh, at this point. But now Spring Lords on the back line going to be beginning to tee off on those, uh, those heavy knights and uh, having a lot of fun as they take them out. Look at the distance on that. That is just huge range right there from those Spring Lords. That is just huge range now. Probe needs to be careful not to overextend because he doesn't have a lot of horse archers here. And you see the archers could still take a good fight and just buy some time for Marine Lord. Yeah, we've got Marine Lord now taking both of the sacred sites as well. Uh, but keep in mind, it's going to be a long time before he does that. And Marine Lord, got to be careful. He's got to wake up. He does manage to wake up. Those units and that sheep aren't going to go over to his opponent, at least not just yet. But... Uh... Now going to be pushing out towards the north and uh, having a little bit of a trouble. I think he might even need some double walls coming in here. At least a, a wooden fortress behind here. He needs something, that's for sure, because he's under attack from multiple angles and he's having a bit of a difficult time in dealing with it, I'd say. Remember that there is uh, two sacred sites right now for Marine Lord, so the countdown is going on. And as you said, currently the attention of Probe is being stretched out, just like in the previous game where he just wasn't able to push because he was raided constantly. Yeah, it's a really good point. Now these Springlords are going to be having a bit of a difficult time. Streltsy here are going to be able to defend them effectively as well. Uh, these Streltsy do very, very well in these close quarter combat situations against these Knights. They absolutely power through them. So even though he is losing a lot of these Springlords, uh, he's also going to be losing, uh, or his enemy rather, is going to be losing a lot of those Knights. Indeed, as you said, that's a clean up here. And once Probe is given a bit of a time, he should be able to get a keep up here to just control this right side and then start pushing towards the middle because that's what he has to go for. There come some mangonels for now, Mr. Probe. Have we got any gold left for Probe in his base? Is there any gold whatsoever up towards that town center? Uh, so we can has... see that he's... Yeah, he's yeah, got some more. I think... Oh, there's a little bit. The 1600. All right, so he's he's not doing terribly. He's doing okay. He, he doesn't need to secure this gold just yet, but uh, obviously it's important. He gets it sooner than later. Now we've got some mangonels coming out as well uh, down towards the south. And, you know, Probe actually with a pretty decent score lead at this point. He is with a score lead, but Marine Lord is imping currently at 128 villagers. Probe is at 93 only. So once we see Marine Lord in Imperial, things could change, especially considering that Probe is still missing both the attack and defense upgrade in Imperial Age, as well as elite horse archer on his army. Yeah, so that once that upgrade does come through, he's going to be looking very fly. Now, keep in mind, 
Streltsy not so strong in the current meta just because of the way that the Springled works. Uh, but obviously going up against the Rus, uh, they do have the strongest Springleds in the game. So we see, uh, was it the College of Artillery that Marine Lord went up to the next stage with? Uh, I believe so. Um, but we can take a look at that in a moment as we observe a beautifully denied castle here. And this is going to open up the entire left side of Marine Lord's base. Yeah, he's gone and cancelled that castle now, realizing that uh, every bit of HP it loses is a potential, uh, you know, fur further issue that he's going to have. And now those Springles, look how much range they've got on them. Absolutely ludicrous. Manganel's opening up as well and going to be getting all that damage off on those farms. And once again, it looks like Marine Lord looking to try and distract his opponent up here towards the north, spotting out that there is that rewall that's happened. Now, keep in mind, these units aren't particularly high siege. They're not like Fire Lancers, not like Opera Niche. They do not have that high siege damage. Uh, but a lot of units actually going to be coming in here. So I do expect that we would see Probe trying to drop down some emergency walls in response because there's not a lot of siege here on his front. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of siege. There is a defensive keep coming in that's still going to expose this food eco and the food. But the keep is going up. I'm somewhat surprised that Probe doesn't have a single cannon here on the battlefield. That would help so much just steamrolling the base of Marine Lord. Yeah, a single cannon would have definitely sealed the deal over for him on that base as now the base trade begins to build in this match. Double Broadax is going to be coming in for Probe, getting in those economic upgrades. Even a battering ram in this position would be an, a welcome addition uh, to this military. But we can see Probe doesn't even have Siege Engineering researched yet, so a bit of a difficult spot for him. Village is now going to begin healing up that town center, and he's going to be stuck here for days. Finally, that Bombard going to be coming in. Now, there is no boiling oil on this keep, neither do we have any weapon emplacements. And a bigger problem here, I believe, is that there's a crossing here, so you don't need to push this part of the eco. You can just keep running past and just killing villagers, and I feel like this is... Was it a double-click accidentally? I think so, I think so. But, yeah, the, my main concern right now is that he's just going to be able to run past this keep and then idle the entire economy of his opponent because he's not been sending reinforcements up here either. There are Streltsy that are now popping up, but there's only a handful of them. The whole economy gets idled. It's a lot of APM issues that you're going to have to be dealing with here as Probe really looking to uh, sort of try and keep his economy safe. But Marine Lord definitely getting a great return on investment there for his APM. Going to be able to try and focus a little bit more on his own base and try and secure that front. As you said, idling the eco is going to help quite a bit for Marine Lord, but we also have to keep in mind that he hasn't really killed a lot and he's losing units here. Whereas on the other side, now we are seeing bombards arriving, so suddenly Marine Lord is going to have to take this direct fight, otherwise he's going to lose his own eco. Yeah, Marine Lord now sitting with his Royal Bloodline upgrade, Elite upgrade on the Royal Knights as well. These guys are maxed out, full HP, full attack, uh, not yet full armor, but they'll get there, don't worry, they'll get there. It will get there. A probe did lose quite a lot of villagers. He's down to 95. Marine Lord is at 122, but his army numbers are not so amazing. Yeah, and most of his army is actually in the base of Probe as well. And that's probably not the place that he wants it, considering he's getting pushed now by Bombards. And those Bombards are moving in to take down this keep. We see the Bombard actually falling into range of the keep here. So he's probably going to need to back this one up, unless he wants to lose this Bombard, because it is going to be going down a bit faster than the keep. Now, the problem for Probe here is that he's got a lot of Spring Lords, but not a lot of units to escort them. So 15, 20 Knights with all those HP upgrades might be enough to just jump on this. And you see those Archers and Knights are still doing a lot of damage to Probe's eco. Yeah, you're not wrong. He's actually having a bit of a difficult time in cleaning this up. He needs to get some sort of melee unit out here, whether it's men at arms, whether it's Knights, something to try and clean up these Archers, because they are so frustrating. Marine Lord has been relentless up here attacking this, uh, this Northern Wall. Um, and uh, he's going to have a very easy time uh, just continuing to get through there. But now we look at the base of uh, Marine Lord, and Marine Lord's actually taken out that cannon or that bombard that was sitting on the front line. So slowly but steadily working on the base. But uh, yeah, the, the lack of siege here is definitely going to be hurting him. Yeah, it's very surprising that we're not seeing any kind of uh, additional siege coming in here. You see, there's a couple of mangonels, but he would have been able to destroy everything by now. Here come the Nightstone. That's a lot of damage that they could do on the Spring's weapons. 
Yeah, this is going to be a pretty big cleanup, I suspect. Marine Lord definitely realizing um, that uh, he's in a decent spot here. Now, keep in mind, those Springles have got an incredibly long range, but it doesn't matter when you've got all of these knights up on top of you. And look, is he even going to lose a single knight? How many knights have we got right here? There's 23 knights. I think, didn't he go into that fight with 18 knights? He's actually come out with more knights that he went in with. Uh, but we do see the bodies of three knights there, four knights on the ground. Uh, and that entire fight has now been cleaned up. And we see a significant swing now for Marine Lord as this is match point. If he wins this game, he wins the series and he, be, he stays on to play the next round. And now those knights do have chivalry as well. So they will just heal all the way back up. As you said, massive disaster there for Probe. And the thing is that he may have trusted too much in the Spring Lords. Yeah, it's one of those difficult situations where you, you kind of feel like Springles are uh, unstoppable in the current meta, but then you remember that the French Royal Bloodlines give extra HP. He's got the Elite upgrade in there. He's French as well, so he's just naturally got insane knights that heal themselves and all that crazy stuff like Candled Saddle. And now we just see that Probe is in a difficult situation as the knights begin to clean up his entire siege mass. Now, keep in mind, this is cheaper siege, but it's not going to be anywhere near enough to clean up this knight mass. Streltsy now coming out. That is definitely the answer to his question. But uh, the question is whether he's going to have enough of those Streltsy out at all. Now, this is a very, very expensive fight here for Marine Lord. So he had to send in a lot of knights. A lot of them died to the boiling oil. Question is, does Marine Lord have enough gold to replenish those? Because currently he's sitting at 93 gold, and that's where the cheap units from the Rus could come into play. Yeah, and that's a really good point. So Probe does have that advantage. Uh, has he actually researched Elite Horse Archer yet? Are we able to double check that? Nope. Uh, he has oh completely given up on got... the Horse Archer play, which is weird. He's got Mounted Precision, though. Or Precision Mounted? I, I can't yeah. remember the exact name mounted of precision. it. Mounted but... Precision. The weird yeah. thing is that those units don't cost gold, so he could just get himself back to a 200 population here in a couple of moments. Yeah, that's really, really curious that he didn't go for that. It's such a great investment for him because, as you mentioned, you know, it's a, it's a trash unit, but it's a very good trash unit. So if you just invest that 700 uh, gold and, you know, you can also get the incendiary up, uh, arrows as well. Uh, but yeah, in, in the late game, they're very, very strong units. Um, so yeah, un unfortunate to see Probe here not investing in that option. Currently, it's only 25 army for him, and Marine Lord, he doesn't have a lot of gold, and he also only has 25 army, but that's a big group of Royal Lancers now. Yeah, these, these knights are definitely going to have a great time. Actually moving in uh, towards the base, but then realizing, you know what, there's two castles there, I'm not going to bother. Now, I did actually see a fire arrow come out in response to one of those uh, Royal Knights, so I think he may have researched at the university that all-important technology. We'll see if he's got a university somewhere around here. There it is. And he hasn't actually researched the incendiary areas. I'm, I'm not sure what I saw then. Must have been seeing things. But uh, he does have that upgrade. But one of the things to note is that his villagers are trying to build that wall up towards the north. And they got picked off by the castle. So it is a very difficult spot for him as he tries to get through that wall. But uh, the castle going to deny any villagers. And now we got some cannon coming in here from Marine Lord. Oof. Now he's the aggressor, so... Probe is sort of on a timer to do something here. Maybe push the middle and cut him off from gold, but he either needs to destroy this army or he needs to launch a counterattack, but something has to be done here for Probe because uh, he's running out of time. Yeah, that's a really good point. So it looks like he's going to go up the middle instead of looking to counter his enemy here. Now, keep in mind these Royal Cannons, they have got higher damage. Uh, they've got uh, a little bit more HP, if I remember correctly. Uh, are they, are they uh, royal? Are we able to clarify? No, they're just normal cannons, actually. Uh, so not the royal variant. But we can see that boiling oil coming out on top of those royal knights and trying their best to, to deal with all of this uh, this damage here. But it actually looks like he's going to be able to push through. Streltsy now coming out and really just a lack of response here from Probe. He's been trying his best to sort of keep up with the, uh, the issue that uh, is before him. But it looks like he might just be taken out here. Yeah, the problem here is that he's going to be forced to chase knights all around his base and still destroy the cannon out here. Eventually, he's going to kill all those knights, but his eco is being pushed, whereas he's not really pushing the opponent's eco right now. Yeah, this is a very, very curious decision from him. Now we've got some veteran horsemen going to be coming out here as well. So Marine Lord saying, hold on, well, I've got no more gold that's in left in the bank. I'm just going to throw anything I can at you. We've got the 
Streltsy on the front line, or rather on the back line, uh, fighting. But Marine Lord actually doing a pretty decent job of holding on on both fronts. Um, the main question is whether there's going to be enough siege in the middle to actually push Marine Lord off gold. If he can actually push Marine Lord off gold completely, then he may actually have a chance. That is Probe's victory condition. Push Marine Lord off gold, win the game. Absolutely. Currently, Marine Lord, on the other hand, only has 400 gold per minute income. Most of that is from the relic he has on the Secret site. So, this plan might actually work out here for Pro, but if this push still was out, it might be game over for him. Yeah, and that, that's exactly it. It's about, you know, being able to stall out that push. The w one concerning thing for me is that there's a lot of Streltsy in there. So th there are plenty. And now we've got multiple raids coming down as well in Marine Lord's base. So he's going to be cleaning up the majority of this. We see that re-wall happening. The villagers do go down, unfortunately. But Marine Lord going to be in a bit of a, a difficult spot here as the cannons continue to fire on the buildings in the middle of the map. Marine Lord was trying to stonewall himself up and he actually finishes the walls in time. But now that all that uh, counterattacks has been cleaned up, you see a lot of Streltsy will be freed up to just move into the battlefield. Still no repairs on that Bombard, though, and once again, that castle might be kept alive here for Marine Lord. Yeah, doing a pretty decent job, but once again, finding a hole in this northern front. Uh, not the first time, won't be the last time, that's for sure. Marine Lord once again looking to annoy and frustrate uh, his enemy here, but I'd love to see some more walls getting thrown up uh, by his opponent. Probe just needs to wall himself out here, really start to compartmentalize his base. Uh, will enable him to defend against these a little bit more effectively, uh, obviously, he's got the Streltsy that are going to be coming out any second, as he's always done. But uh, now going to be finally pushing through. And Marine Lord, no villagers on gold currently. Absolutely nothing. He is in a difficult spot, I suspect. He's in a difficult spot, especially given that his opponent is floating 6,000 gold. And with the high trade house, he could even buy some food if his food eco is getting graded. This could be getting better and better for Probe here. The scores are getting closer and closer. Yeah, so probably really having uh, a bit more thought about the long game here than Marine Lord. So Marine Lord obviously uh, thinking, you know, more about the immediate future, whereas Probe really playing the long game, securing up this gold, focusing this gold. You know, we mentioned it earlier when that attack was coming through to the north of Probe's base. We said, is he going to come up around here and try and deal with this attack or is he just going to push through the middle? And he said, I'm just going to push through the middle. And now we see the way that he's getting punished because of this, because Marine Lord has got absolutely no gold. He does not have any gold, and you see, Probe's eco is getting great, but he's got a resource bank that's enough to buy himself some time. But where are the Streltsy? Streltsy need to get up here right now because the majority of these Springlets are going to go down the cannon on the front line, which was the majority of the siege here. Streltsy looked like they fell back at the worst possible time. A huge amount of villagers out here on gold, despite stacking up 4k gold at the moment. Probe still decides that it's going to be in his best interest to be on that gold. Maybe he doesn't want Marine Lord to get it, but speaking of Marine Lord getting it, it looks like he's getting it at the moment because all of these Streltsy are opening fire. Marine Lord looking to secure up the back gold mines with another keep on the front line and hopefully try and get a decent surrounding here. There are a lot of Royal Knights that are getting shredded by these Streltsy and look how much damage those Streltsy are doing. That's ludicrous, Lidacor. And they don't even have the chemistry upgrade. That's something I was looking at uh, just a couple of moments before. They'll be even better but Marine Lord is through the worst because he's able to use this momentum to get himself a keep here and secure a couple of thousand more gold. And as you said, the win condition for Probe is to push away Marine Lord from the gold mines in the middle. Yeah, that is exactly it. But look behind this. So many units just getting... I don't even know where do these units come from. How do they get in here? But they can still somehow find their way in. Probe really needs to double, triple wall these layers up. He's still got a hole in, at the front line here. He just needs to wall across. Even if you just delete those farms, get him out of here and just put some walls up. Just double layer, triple layer. I don't care. Just make it stop. Yeah, he has to stop the raids because so many times in Age Vampires history have we seen that you will just be raided to death at this space. You see Probe is struggling with population. 140, only 75 villagers at this time is not amazing. And you see, Marine Lord will just send wave after wave of cavalry, and at some point, his opponent's eco is going to collapse. That's exactly it. Uh, so now we do finally see that wall coming up. I did talk about this, so hopefully he deletes. You know, all, all you got to do is just delete that single um, mining camp that was up there. But now it looks like a bit of a push. Yeah, that mining camp right there, and he's going to be able to wall across. Uh, but, you know, whether he decides or whether he puts two and two together, but look at the massive horsemen we've got out right now. Are these, these are fully upgraded horsemen, aren't they? 
yeah, they are elite horsemen. They've got three, two upgrades on them. Going to be pushing towards the Streltsy. That is the counter to the Streltsy. Mangonels, horsemen, both very effective against them. The Streltsy going to be trying their best to cut through these as we see them moving back. He's got to just keep them steady, though. That's going to be increasing the attack speed on them. He doesn't want to move them. We see them all firing off at the same time. Going to be a lot of overkill here, but actually managing to burn pretty effectively through the majority of these Streltsy. And we see Marine Lord cleaning this up. He's going to be reinforcing these units at the same time. We see both of the current play or resources for the current players. Sorry, current resources for both players. Very, very low food counts, but the Streltsy do hold. They do hold over here. This is a crucial hold. Look at all that massacre being done. Imagine if these guys had chemistry even. On the other hand, we have to start thinking about the fact that Probe is the one starting to run low on gold because he's the one losing the middle. And Marine Lord still has quite a lot of gold to work with. Yeah, at this point, I'm thinking maybe it might be advisable for Probe to just get some trebuchets out. Uh, normally, I don't prefer, I don't like the trebuchet, even though they are the superior siege engine. Uh, but in this situation, it just seems like they're just a lot more effective. Uh, but it does look like in response, we do have Triple Bombard going to be coming out for Probe here. He's going to be looking to pick off this cannon, trying his best as a villager heals it up. He's got to be careful. All of these uh, horsemen running in, and we see the uh, Bombards opening up on the back line. A beautiful choke point here for Probe, and he's very happy with himself fighting this one. A couple of horsemen looking to make rounds around the backside. Going to be able to pick up the majority of these siege engines as well. There are three of these Bombards. He needs villagers out here to heal these up. Otherwise, they will go down very costly, very expensive. Expensive. Probe holding on for dear life right now underneath the keep the boiling oil coming out and look at Probe actually going to be going down here as Marine Lord manages to overwhelm, overcome and does he though? The Streltsy are holding on. The Streltsy are holding on. <laughs> oh my lord, this is a fight right now. This is the fight but Marine Lord is just pushing that dagger deeper and deeper. Probe is stuck at 120 population. Marine Lord, with the food eco he has, which is completely untouched for the majority of the game, he's just flooding out cavalry left and right. You see, he's constantly at 200 population, and wave after wave of horsemen will just grind this down. Honestly, Probe should start thinking about adding Spearman himself, because it's only light cavalry. This is absolutely wild political. I can't believe that we're watching this right now. It is ludicrous how how much this is. I I, I just I just can't put two and two together. It is it, it's crazy. Uh, Marine Lord now going to be pushing in, but uh, this is only a small mass of horse archers. Going to try and clean this out down to the south. Probe will be doing just wants to avoid any more reinforcements coming in from this angle. Only mangonels here in the middle for Marine Lord. Those will be taken down quite easily by the keep. So I guess the horsemen will have to do the dirty work of destroying this keep, but that's going to be difficult with boiling oil around. Yeah, it looks like they just run straight past. They're looking to get something a little bit uh, more valuable. They head straight down to that gold mine. There's just a single little bit of gold that remains on that gold mine. You can see just a tiny little bit in the middle there. And those horsemen are now going to turn around and try and siege down this castle. But uh, I do not think they're going to be having much success. And I tell you what, I didn't expect this game to be this close. We are in a French favored matchup on a French favored map with the rank one player going up against Probe, who currently sits, I believe, at about rank 80. Uh, but Probe still managing to do incredibly well on this map, despite those negative, uh, those, uh, those disadvantages, I guess we could say. Indeed, he's doing extremely well, and he's slowly recovering his population. So in a very, very long game, he still has a shot, but this is going to be difficult to pull off because now he's the one that's going to be off from gold, aside from the fact that he has four relics, but that's basically it. Yeah, now one thing to note, you just saw uh, over on that uh, cathedral that were holding his relics, uh, there was a whole bunch of uh, stone and, and food and wood that came through as well. So he does have that technology that gives him a little bit more um, resources from those relic trickles. But now we see Marine Lord once again looking to push up, build a new forward base in front of his old forward base. And now at the same time, we've got Probe that's pushing in. But once again, only a single Bombard coming in here for him. All of these Streltsy now looking to push out onto the front line. They're going to get a pretty decent surround here, these Horsemen, as they once again try and connect for the 15th time in this game. Horsemen going to be getting on top of the Springholds as well, sieging these down. A Manganel on the back line. That's exactly what he needs to take these Streltsy out. Getting a shot off. It's going to be beautiful. He manages to take out a lot of HP on these bad boys and actually clean this one up pretty, pretty well, I would say. Yeah, the thing is that the Streltsy are a powerful unit, but they need some sort of meat shield in front. Otherwise, they will just be ground down by the cavalry. Just a never-ending flood of horsemen here for uh, 
Marine Lord, as he's getting a keep up on the left side, or at least he's attempting to do that. Yeah, not only a keep, it looks like he's got a couple houses over there as well. Uh, and it also looks like a Siege Workshop going to be going up as well. Streltsy going to be coming in and actually picking off the villagers before the keep does go down. Very, very nice from the Streltsy. But obviously that uh, Siege Workshop did go up, so we may see a cannon coming out very shortly. Looking at the resources, we have now way better gold income for Marine Lord. 1,400 gold per minute. His opponent is still able to access gold, and I feel like it could come down to whoever controls this gold mine in the middle, because that's going to be the last bit of gold left. Anyone trading? No one is actually trading, but Marine Lord has both corners to do that. Yeah, very interesting. I was just thinking about that as you brought it up, so I'm glad that we sort of hit the exact same... Uh line of thinking at the same time so players not trading and this is a notoriously good map for trading uh, if you can secure a trade on this map you are looking at potentially about 200 gold a return which is a huge amount uh so yeah very decent investment there if marine lord can secure that one up obviously probe in a difficult spot not having access to either of his corners to trade to he has this market to work with but as you said it's going to be a shorter distance trade, and of course it's always going to be exposed to the aggression, and this is why control in this corner helps so much for Marine Lord. Yeah, Marine Lord now in the middle, going to be taking out those gold mining villages and forcing Probe off gold. He's got zero villages now that are on gold. Streltsy moving out, but not a lot of gold in the bank. Does he have any tickets on his golden gate at the moment? Is he going to be able to utilize that in any way? Zero tickets. He spent absolutely everything at the carnival. He's not going to be having a good time, but now those villagers on the front line also going to be taken out by the castle of Probe. And this game is actually pretty unreal. I'll be honest, Probe really fighting for his life here. Like, in literal terms, because this is a match point for his opponent over here. The problem here is that he's just constantly being pushed, and he's never able to hit a Marine Lord. So, like, the, his only chance now is to starve his opponent out of gold completely, and then just keep adding Streltsy using the gold he gets from the monasteries. And speaking of gold, are we able to take a look at the guild hall for Marine Lord and see what that is up to? Uh, there she is. Holy potatoes. Oh! Whoa, you guys are worried about Golden Marine Lords over here, literally saving up to buy up in the entire Wall Street right now. 18,000 gold. I don't even think he's looked at this thing once. He yeah. is playing the long game right here. Just when you thought this was over, this ain't even begun. I, I think it's actually over now. You see 104 population only for Probe. He is just losing villager count really rapidly. Heaps are going down and you see on the left side, they're about to breach his base. He's about to lose the middle, and as you said, Marine Lord is sitting on a whopping 18,000 gold in that guild hall. Yeah, that is absolutely ludicrous. I don't think I've ever seen it that high before, Lidacore. I don't think he's touched it once this game. I think he just moved it over to gold and left it and set it and forget it. Uh, that is absolutely crazy. Yeah, I probably forgot about it, because at this point, withdrawing 18,000 gold would make so much sense for you, because that just allows you to finish off the game. Yeah, it, it really... Yeah, it's a difficult spot. But now we can see that I don't even think he's going to need it. The score lead is beginning to build for Marine Lord at the moment. And he's really showed his prowess here in the late game, dividing and conquering his opponent. Just military all over the map. And I tell you what, this is the, the type of player I hate playing against. The type of player that just is constantly raiding you, you know, the north of your base, the south of the base, the east of your base, the west of your base. There's just units absolutely everywhere. And there's nothing you can do about it because he's faster than you, he's prettier than you, he's stronger than you. All of those things, Lidacore. And it just really makes it such a hard game. Indeed it is. This is what distinguishes the elite players in Age of Empires 2 from the good ones as well. Being able to raid your opponent post-Imperial to slowly grind him down as we have Marine Lord securing game number four and taking the entire set. Very, very well played to Marine Lord. So for anybody wondering, Marine Lord now moves on to next week or next round. He's going to be going up against the next competitor and looking to see whether he can continue staying on. As, as the name suggests, the winner stays on. Indeed, this secures $500 price pool for Marine Lord, and he's going to have a chance to fight against a contender next week at the same time as well. We don't know the contender yet, but I assume it's going to be announced soon. Quick look at the village account, and you see, these are the drops that uh, slowly ground probe down. Just constant rates from Marine Lord.
Yeah, he's done a really, really decent job. You see that village account there as well, just up a significant amount, but not really losing any villagers other than what I believe he lost in the middle, I think it was. But yeah, feeling very, very happy. And you compare that over to Probe and it's just absolute anarchy in Probe's base, constantly losing villagers throughout that game. It looks like every every minute that went on, he lost a villager. I tell you what, it doesn't feel fun.